Hey everybody, it's time now for another Feature Friday. So this is going to be a multiple part series about the graphical scheduling applications. There's quite a few of them to cover. I was recently asked to do a rather extensive presentation on the subject, and I thought it'd be a good thing to share uh, in this particular format. So part one is just going to be kind of an overview. Part two, we're going to start to get into the, the graphical scheduling application itself, uh, and then the rest of the applications will be their own parts as well. So let's get started. So before you jump in and start using these applications, we have a little bit of advice for you based on our years of experience in working with this application set. So the first thing you want to do is sit down with your team to truly understand how planning and scheduling is going on in your organization today. There may be things that these applications help you do that you're not able to do now. There may be things that you're doing now that you need to stop doing as a result of perhaps using these applications. You really want to work to determine which of these applications initially fit best with you and if you have uh, any specific requirements and such. You want to then work to clean up your foundational data, you know, work orders with dates and durations, uh, calendars, labor records, things like that, so that when you pilot the use of the applications that people will not be nearly as frustrated if they're working with uh, not so great data. So you need to spend a little bit of time cleaning up your data, uh, not everything, but uh, perhaps a focused set of work orders and such so that when you pilot the apps, uh, things go a little smoother. Certainly training. Uh, these are not your typical Maximo applications. There's a lot of feature functionality in them, and so there should be some uh, reasonably extensive uh, and thoughtful training uh, around these applications for your whoever's piloting them. Give yourself some time to work with them. Go through a few of your cycles when it comes to planning and scheduling to get comfortable with the apps. Make sure you have somebody behind the scenes that has uh, some experience and can offer some Q&A support. People will have lots of questions and they will need to be shown at times how to do things in the applications. And then of course in the end, the whole point of the pilot is to really evaluate how effective the tools that you have selected are going to be to support your needs. You may find that just a couple of these graphical applications are enough for your organization and you can just focus on those and leave the other ones for a later date. So if you're not familiar with the graphical scheduling applications in Maximo or Manage, so their overall purpose is to prepare and manage and publish multiple and varied schedules all within the product. You don't have to export your list of work orders out to an external tool anymore. They're also built to really support complex planning and scheduling uh, by way of these graphical apps rather than uh, tabular applications like we've done in the past. And again, the whole point really is to view schedules directly in Maximo. You don't need to print out lists of records anymore, although you can still print. And you can also have people with read-only access if you'd like. However, keep in mind, and we'll say this again several times, there are some data and record requirements that you need to have in place for these tools to be useful. You know, some of them are like calendars and shifts, labor records, crews defined, as well as a few other foundational records and data as well. There is pretty clear IBM documentation on each application. And of course, we have some backup slides that we'll get to way at the end or in another part of this particular series. So how do all these applications fit together? When you look at them in the menu in the product, they're not in any particular order. So take a look at this diagram here. This will give you a sense of kind of where you would start and then how you would evolve your usage of these different apps. So on the left-hand side, of course, like we've mentioned and will continue to mention, is the uh, record quality of your calendars, your labor records, the work orders, things like that, uh, need to be in pretty good shape in order to pull them into the different graphical applications. Once you're in good shape there, then it's a matter of using, perhaps, initially, the graphical scheduler. This would probably be the very first application, and probably the one you'll use the most uh, in, the, in the set of uh, graphical apps here. Then secondarily would probably be graphical assignment, where you're able to assign people different work. 
And then for the folks out in the field, perhaps the graphical work week would be a good application for them to use and be able to see what they need to focus on for the week based upon what you've done in the schedule or in the assignment app. Then, of course, is the graphical resource view and the graphical crew management. Those would be good for ongoing changes to who's available to do what. And then there's a functionality called the graphical appointment book, which has a traditional application behind it to actually establish what those books are. So that might be a useful one for folks that are out in the field making appointments with customers. And, of course, you're able to uh, print these schedules out, uh, PDF form or out to an Excel. And don't forget, they also have a sense of ownership. So we're going to end this first part on graphical scheduling applications by looking at some of the typical use cases that we see uh, by our customers. So one of the schedules that we see quite often is a work order backlog by a particular labor group. Um, perhaps also work order backlog by priority uh, and even the work order status. Basically, you're able to put in a weekly schedule together uh, by the crew uh, for each uh, day of the week. So that is probably the most popular use of this uh, scheduling tool. Certainly for outages and turnarounds, you're able to establish those schedules. The, uh, the parent work orders, uh, the work order hierarchy, you know, any type of task work orders that you're looking to perform uh, during these outages. Another very popular one is organizing your PM work orders, your preventative maintenance work orders, to schedule them as well as to track whether uh, their degree of completion uh, or not. So another very common query, which we'll talk about queries in the next uh, part here, a very common query is to bring in the preventative maintenance work orders into the schedule. And then certainly for any of these, adjusting the plans as needed as you make your changes, the underlying work orders uh, get changed as well when you publish the schedule. Um, and then, of course, publishing and distributing these schedules out to the different teams and the crews. So.